So we will look at now another algorithm that avoids both costly database scan operations and we will totally avoid candidate generation. It represents your transaction database into a highly condensed but complete format for frequent pattern mining. That's why it's called FP growth algorithm, frequent pattern growth algorithm. There are three steps. Let's consider this small database again. In step number one, we will scan the database only once and find frequent item sets of length one. So in here, all unique items we create in this table, header table, F, C, A, B, M, P. These are the unique items in this database. And the step one gives us their frequency. In this column, we have frequency of F, C, A, B, M, P. In the third column, we have a node that leads us, for example, in the, uh, I will explain this in a moment, but after we create the frequency column, we do step number two, we order frequent items in the frequency descending order. So for this transaction, I is not interesting because it has less frequency. Our threshold is two. So we will drop I, we will drop G, we will drop D because they are less frequent in the database. So we arrange, we order the frequent items after filtering the uninteresting ones in descending order. So F, C, A, M, P. This particular transaction becomes F, C, A, M, P. This transaction becomes F, C, A, B, M, and so on. Are you with me? Yes. In the step number three, we scan the database second time, and this is the last time we scan the database. We construct an FP tree, frequent pattern tree. This construction is interesting. How do we do that? Let's look at each transaction one at a time and see how this database, this tree is constructed. First transaction, we take FCAMP and we create a branch in the database, in the tree. So to the root of the node, we put the first item and the frequency of that item. C, A, M, P. Till now, we have come across F, C, A, M, P only once. That's why this frequency is just one at transaction one. And then we put the address of this node in the head column of the header table. So header table will lead us to the leftmost node in the tree. For the next transaction, we have F, C, A, B, M. So we check in the tree. Do we have F under the root? Yes, we increment the count. Under F, do we have C? We increment the count. Under the C, do we have A? Yes, we increment the count. Under A, do we have B? No. So we create a new node and put the address of that node in the header table and put one here because this is the first time we are seeing B. And then M. After B, we check if M is there. No, we put M under B. A link is missing here. But after putting M under B, we create a link to the existing M. So this dotted line shows the other occurrence of M in the tree. Next transaction, FB. We will check, do we have F under the root? Yes, we increment that count. For B, do we have B under F? No, so we in create a node B and put the address of this node in the previously uh, recorded node in the tree. Will you help me do this transaction, CBP? What shall we do for this transaction, CBP, to put into the tree? We will check. Do we have C under the root node? We don't have, so we will create a node C and put the address of that node in C. Under the C, we don't have B, so we will create B under C and put the address of B here. And then under B, we will put P. P, we already have an existing node in the tree, so we will create a connection to P here, like this. Similarly, F, C, A, M, P, for the last transaction, we will have our complete tree like this. After having this complete tree, did you notice that FCA incremented FCA counts and then M 
and P became 2 and 2. So look at the header table now. You have in the one column all unique items. In the next column, you have all the frequencies. In the third column, you have the addresses. So if you want to find F, where is F? There are four Fs. You will go in the tree here. Where are Ms? So you will go one, two M here and one M is here. This tree can wonderfully help us find the association rules. Based on this tree, we will create a conditional pattern base. A conditional pattern base is unique items in one column and the pattern base in the other column. So look at this. If we see C for this C item, we want to find the pattern base. We will check the node that is C is child of and F three times as many as the count of C are coming together with F. For A, we will look at A and F C three times is the conditional pattern base. For B, one B is here, so F C A one time is the conditional pattern base for B and another B is here, C, with coming with C. Another B is here, coming with F. So conditional pattern base is going to be used to create your rules. So from conditional pattern base, you can now filter out based on the frequency. C, B, 1 is not interesting. You are interested only in things that are more than 2. So you can say wherever you find P, item, you will also find C three times, once in this transaction, once in this branch of the tree. So these are the rules that you extract from the conditional pattern base which come from this tree and using this interesting algorithm, you reduce the number of scans to two, maximum two number of scans in the database and there is no item generation involved. So in this setting, we learned association rule mining, the concept applications and how they are uh, running the engines of modern uh, AI enterprises and predictive analytics. The challenge there is to number of generating number of item sets and then out of the interesting item sets generating and checking the support and confidence of the rules. We looked at a priori algorithm to reduce that number and then even better algorithm, FP growth algorithm, that further makes this process more efficient by reducing number of scans and avoiding generation of item sets altogether. So I will stop here and invite any feedback or questions and comments from you regarding association rule mining in general and specifically to these two algorithms.